next talk is by Mr. from IT Delhi, and she will talk on A delta module, oxygen homology, and plant radiation. Thank you, sir. And good evening, everybody. Today, I'm going to talk on uh, A-delta modules, oxide homology, and higher derivations. So, let me start with this question, what is an A-delta? This the one which works. I think so. That's on this line, and now it works. Okay. Right. Yes. And this works. Okay, and this is the button. Yeah, so what is an A delta module? Then we'll talk about the category of A delta modules. I'll also talk about the Wavilo Laszlo descent for A delta modules. And then I'll talk about Hoxhill homology and Galois descent on the Hoxhill homology when you define a lead derivative on its homology groups. So let us start with the A delta modules. So, uh, what is the difference between A modules and A delta modules? Yeah. So, basically, you have an A module, and in, ad in addition to that, you're going to have a map from it's going to be a pair, so it's going to be a module along with a map delta M from M to M, which satisfies some compatibility condition with the derivation on A. So your setup is you have a ring, you also have a derivation on that, and then you take this tuple M delta M. So what is that? It's a collection of two things. One, you have an A module, and then you have a map from M to M delta M, which has a compatibility with the derivation on A. So delta m a delta m acting on a dot m is going to be delta a dot m plus a dot delta m acting on m. So, so this pair is called an a delta module if you have a module with such map. And what are going to be the morphisms on this uh, this collection of a delta modules? Of course, these are going to be the module morphisms, net module maps with the another compatibility condition, which is again going to be an obvious one that you demand that this, there should be a commutative diagram here. So when you have moving from F to N and you have a delta N here on N, you have a delta M here on M. And of course, then you want it to be a commutative diagram and compatibility with, with the structure which you have on modules and the maps among the NA module maps between the two modules M and N. So these morphisms, you call them uh, delta morphisms. So these are going to be the morphisms. So objects are going to be A delta modules and morphisms are going to be A modules map with this compatibility condition. So morphisms between A delta modules are called delta morphisms. We usually denote the collection of all delta morphisms by home delta MN. And then the category of A delta modules we denoted by A delta modules like we denote for A mode, the category of all A modules. The first observation about this category is that this is actually a symmetric monoidal category. So, of course, one has to define a tensor product here and then you have to see it's symmetric. So, you the obvious candidate for the tensor product is going to be you take the tensor product in the module category and then you try to define a delta map on it. And one can observe that if you define delta M tensor N, this map, on the module M tensor N. This tensoring is inside the mode A, then this map is actually makes it an A delta module. So what you have given M and N in the A, A delta mode, you just define a new element in the category A mode, A delta mode, where M tensor N is coming from the A mode, and then you are defining a delta map here on tensor, which is actually very naturally, this is delta M tensor one plus one tensor delta, and which is a natural extension of derivation if you take on M and N, that how do we extend the derivation on the tensor module? This is how we are going to do it. So it's a very natural way to define a new delta on M tensor N, and this makes it an A delta module. Of course, the tensor taking place in the A mode, so it's going to be a symmetric monoidal category, right? And now we define an internal home object here in the category. How do we define the internal home? So given two objects, M delta M and N delta N in A delta mode, you set the internal home as 
what are the, what is an internal home? It's a home coming from the A mode with the map delta bar. So all the morphisms in the A mode category, you take that collection along with this delta bar F. Act, delta bar acting on f is delta n composed with f minus f composed with delta m. So now this this is actually going to be an object in the a delta mode. So this internal home object we usually denoted by home delta m in, and one can observe that it's an a delta module. So it's actually an object in the category a delta mode. Okay, so we have an internal home. So the next thing we will prove is that. This, this is actually a right adjoint to the tensor product. The moment we have that, we can claim that it's going to be the close symmetric monoidal category. Then we do have that result for A delta modules. So if you take the family, these three uh, alley candidates in the A delta modules category, M delta M, N delta N, and P delta P, then home of M tensoring over A N comma P delta, that means delta morphisms between these two objects, it's nothing but delta morphism of M comma home delta N comma P. So basically you have seen it in the mode category also. Mode A, this, this is going to be left. Tensor is always a left, left adjoint to home or home is a right adjoint to the tensor. So this is an internal home going to be the right adjoint to the tensor. And of course, then we have this result for A delta modules that the category of A delta modules is a closed symmetric monoidal category. So it's just the outline, the statement actually follows of what we have discussed so far about the A delta modules. Now, if you have any morphisms, any morphism from an algebra, K algebra A to A prime, and another derivation delta prime on A prime, with the compatibility condition all the time we are writing with this compatibility condition of F with delta prime, then you can make A prime delta prime an A module. So this object, you can make it as a delta module. And it's, it's a very natural uh, way to do it because in the module category also, you call it the extension of a scalars and the restriction of a scalars, then you make it to an element of the other category. So if you have an element in, uh, if you have, you can cons a prime delta prime mode, you can talk about the category of those modules. And on the other hand, you have a delta mode category and you can treat A prime delta prime as A delta mod modular element. So this is going to be an element in that category. And we have these functors between these two categories then naturally. So F star is going to be from A delta mode to A prime delta prime mode. That's the extension of a scalars. And similarly, extension of the scalars is basically you will do the tensor with A prime delta prime. And the restriction of the scalars again, because of that compatibility condition, you will say, See the natural restriction which you will have to make any a prime a prime module as a module by putting the multiplication a dot m is just f a dot m the natural way you do for the module category you will get the result here as well and you can see that f star is a left adjoint to f uh, sub star with all this you can have certain uh, direct results for the localization and completion so you will have if you take any multiplicatively closed set, the localization, you know that you can extend your derivation to the localization, and that's going to be an A delta module. Similarly, for any I adic completion, A hat delta hat, we know that we can extend delta to its I adic completion, and then A hat delta hat, and again the localization, all these are going to be A delta modules. Now I'll prove a decent result for A delta module involving localization and completion in the ring. So what, it, what decent result we have? So we'll take a particular element, which is going to be a non-zero divisor. And then we take the ideal i is just the ideal generated by this element. And the multiplicative closed set is going to be one s s square. Then what we have is suppose I have the elements in the a s delta s. So I have the category of a delta modules. Similarly, I can talk about the category of a s delta s modules. And I can also talk about the category of a hat delta hat modules. So what we have here in the uh, in this statement, you take a module P delta P in the category A S delta S, and a module Q delta Q in the category of A hat delta hat, which is the completion of A with respect to this S adic topology. And if we have an isomorphism that says that the completion of P in this S adic topology is going to be same as the localization of Q with respect to the multiplicative set. 
So, if we have the this isomorphism in the category of A s hat delta s hat modules, this is one extra condition that the element has to be regular for Q, then there exists an A delta module m delta m in the category of A delta mode such that its localization is going to be P delta P and its completion is going to be Q delta Q. So, basically you can obtain those two modules from the element in mode A, A delta mode, right. That is how we do it. This is, this is going to be just, we have seen it for the uh, A module. So, you can obtain the module P delta P as the localization of M delta M and the element which was in the completion, you can obtain it as a completion of the same element in the category of A hat delta hat. So, this is the existence of having such an element in the A, A delta mode category. Another thing which we have this element is going to be unique, unique up to the. So, if you have such an element M delta M and you have these maps which we are talking about the localization is going to be P delta P and the completion is Q delta Q. If you have such maps, then they are unique up to the isomorphism. That means, in the in the category of A delta mode up to isomorphism, you are going to have this element unique. So, basically we have a unique element M delta M in the category of A delta mode, which gives as a localization, it will give you the element in the A S delta S and on completion, it will give you the element in the A hat delta hat, okay. Now, let us talk about just, just recalling the what is Hoxfield homology, although we know what it is. So, you will take a, uh, so you take a commutative algebra over a commutative ring K and then its Hoxfield groups are going to be defined, the Hoxfield homology group of the chain complex where the nth term in the chain group on the chain complex is given by this tensor, right? This, and plus one components here. And the differential uh, maps, they are given by this expression. So B acting on A0 tensor A1 tensor A and this is going to be minus 1 to the power i, some i varying from 0 to n minus 1 and you take the product and the, at the last term, it, you bring it to the first place. And this is how the differentials are defined. And then because you have taken A to be a commutative ring, so HH H H and A is going to have an A modular structure. Further, if you have a derivation delta on A, then it will give you a linear operator on the Hoxfield homology groups. And this, this is not, this is already known, it is nothing new. You define L delta on the chain complex, this is how you define it. So, delta acting on A0 to An, you just take the sum and make the delta acting on the ith component and take all the sums. This is going to be your lead derivative on the chain complex and then you verify that it commute with the differentials and you will finally get a map on the oxide homology. Delta L delta commutes with differential and induces a map on the oxide homology. Further, you can also observe that this is actually making it an A delta modulus. So, L delta acting on an element of the group multiplied with A is actually delta A, that element plus A dot L delta A0 to A. So, basically, it satisfies the condition of being a uh, uh, HHN, HHN A. Uh, will be in A delta modules, right? So, that is what we have. If A is a commutative K algebra, if you with the K linear derivation delta, then for e, every n, the pair H and A, L delta n is a A delta module. This was actually the known example. This was a kind of motivation for talking about this A, a delta module category. This is already known that given a derivation, you can always have a lead derivative on the Hoxfield homology. And it makes it an A delta module. Now, we we prove a Galois descent on the Hoxfield homology group as well. So, suppose you have a multiplicatively closed set and delta S is the extension of the derivation A to the localization. Then for each n, you localize the Hoxfield homology group. Your tensor, you understand now this tensor, meaning in the A delta module category. This is actually going to be the localization of a homology, Hoxfield homology group of localization with respect to the delta S. That's all I think. These are the references.
see the uh, the one way to see it that whenever you have it, you said there is a relation between the delta modules and the derivations. Yeah, of course, from the definition itself, you know, they involve the derivation. But you can see another way of looking at it if you have understood that uh, given a derivation, you can always talk about the HQ polynomial ring AXD, right? You define a multiplication, XA is AX plus D is so known. So basically, another way of looking at A delta modules could be you see the modules over AXD, the HQ polynomial ring in some sense. So the module, basic module structure remains same, but when we talk about the homological aspect and the categorical things, there are differences because uh, even with the basic step, when you talk about this trivial derivation and you look at the modules over AX, they are not, their tensor internal home is not going to be the way you define the home for AX, the normal polynomial ring. But on the ground level, when you talk about the A delta modules, they are actually having the same structure as the derivation over AXD, where XD is a square polynomial ring. And this is vice versa. So you can always relate the two. Thank you, speaker again. Thank you. Thank you. 